Hey there, Mission Control. All right. Uh, well, we're inside the personal quarters of the Real Martian today, uh, working in the office, and we're going to be talking about automation, Arduinos. Woo, woo. Way cool stuff. All right. Um, so what we're going to do today is I'm um, actually building a box today, a project box uh, for the heating uh, and ventilation system. We're going to make it to where we have a uh, switch. Try to hold this all here with one hand. Uh, and a power plug. Uh, the switch will control an individual power plug. And on each of these plugs, there'll be the circulation fan and the, um, the heater that we just installed. Uh, the switch is here as an emergency shutoff. So if something goes wrong, and just come over here and flip the switch uh, and bypass any automation that's inside of it. Uh, kill the power to both the units. Uh, so there'll be two of these in each one. Uh, so we're going to put those in. Um, I'm using a standard outdoor box, electrical box here. You can get them at Home Depot pretty cheap. Uh, I think this one was like six bucks. Uh, the face plate's a different story. So um, this is a metal face plate and when you get up to the larger sizes like this, uh, I found Amazon's a great place to go shopping. Um, I think this one was like almost ten bucks or something to get everything that we need. It is metal. Nice and hard, easy to drill through, holds things real well. Uh, so I like that. Again, Amazon for that. Standard uh, plugs and receptacles or switches uh, that you can get at Home Depot, very cheap. Uh, we're using the Wemos uh, R1 or D1 R2. This is uh, an Arduino board. Uh, you can use Raspberry Pi, uh, Intel's, uh, what is it, Edison, I think is what it is. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I learned on the Arduino, so I'm just comfortable with it. I think Raspberry Pi is a slightly higher quality device, uh, but I don't need it right now. In fact, uh, this is more than what I need. Um, this has the built-in Wi-Fi, uh, like I was saying, uh, and the key thing why I wanted this is so that I can program everything over the air, or OAT, um, OTA, excuse me, uh, over the air. So what that means is I can sit at my computer inside the office here and I can program uh, these boards uh, from inside the office on our local network. So uh, everything out in the building is Wi-Fi so these connect very nice little slick things. They have a, a lot of input output uh, digital and analog um, pretty nice little board. I think we can strip this thing down and probably get like a two dollar three dollar board. Uh, this one is fifteen dollars uh, watch out for counterfeit parts out there. If you're shopping, the ones from China, they can tend to do something like that on you. Very bad. You don't want that to happen. Or something like this. Also don't want that to happen. Very bad. So, yeah, we got the Wemos there. Um, you got to have a power supply for these things. So, um, there are 12 volt power supplies that you can buy. Some of them are very expensive. So what I did is I just went and got the wall wart. I didn't know these were called wall warts, but I totally understand why they call them that. And what you do is you open this bad boy up, and you take out all the circuitry inside, and then you can just custom customize this to your, uh, your way of plugging everything in. So now you have the actual power supply, you plug it into your board, and you can splice into this wire and actually run other 12-volt devices off it as well. So I really like that. Uh, another thing that we're going to be putting in today is a relay, and a relay is another name for a switch. So this particular relay can hold up to 10 amps uh, at up to 240 volts, so uh, it, it does a pretty good job. Um, I have also been burned on these, of course, with counterfeit parts, so be careful. Uh, you get what you pay for, as they say. So uh, what a relay does is it connects into uh, the control board and then you run your main power into this and you can actually turn things on and off. So this relay will attach to both of these switches with main power uh, and then the switches will attach to these so um, this one relay will run all of the system for us. It'll turn it on. Uh, right now we're going to program it to turn the heaters and the fans on for 15 minutes every hour based on the temperature that's inside the lane and what I mean by that is if the temperature is, let's say, above 50 degrees in the lane, I'm not going to turn the heaters on. That would just be a waste of fuel. But if the temperature drops below 40 degrees in the lane, I want to kind of keep everything at 40 degrees. Uh, kind of That's the lowest temperature that things really grow effectively at So uh, in cold weather. So we want to try to keep it above that. So that's what that relay is for. 
Um, in this particular uh, box, we're going to be doing uh, uh, inside of have one temperature sensor and another one for outside, uh, outside the actual building so we can actually get digital readings. Uh, I'm hoping I can actually update my display on the screen, the heads up display, so that the data is actually real uh, by getting the system all connected, so um, future vision there. So what we're going to be doing today is fitting. Uh, all of this together and fitting means that we've got to take all these things Can I get the idea? And we got to shove it into this box So this is an important stage uh, what I do when I first am designing these, there's software that you can use that can help you design all this, but I'm a little old school. Uh, I just use my composition book, and I draw out all the connections that I need to have, and I figure out how many wires each one of them is, how many connection points into the control unit are required, what type of connector they have, make sure I have all the right stuff. Amazon is great for this, so we'll be updating... Um, therealmartianstore.com so you can go there and actually see all the parts and everything we bought and that'll link you over to Amazon so you can just buy the stuff, add it to your wish list if you like, uh, make it a lot easier for you rather than searching everything like what I had to. So um, that's really directed at the folks that uh, have never really done these things before. To those that have done this, you're way better than I am. Uh, so you probably have your own DigiKey supply account or something like that where you can get these things, uh, really high quality stuff coming from you. I'm not talking to you guys really just uh, Here's a guy uh, trying to relearn stuff he learned back in college and put it to good use. So uh, what I like about the Arduinos and all of this stuff is really this is all off the shelf. Uh, you know, no, no customization here. I can just go buy it, put it in, and we're good to go. Now, I mentioned I, I would like to customize something by making it simpler so that we can drive the cost down. Um, I think I can get you know, our boards down significantly lower and probably have a built-in 12-volt power supply. Uh, and still be lower cost. So uh, those are the types of things I like to think about for the future, maybe phase four, we could actually have custom boards made by that point. So I'll just have to design all of them and I've never designed a board so that'll be fun. Um, all right, so today I'm gonna get started on this. I'm gonna put all these things together uh, and then once I get it all put together, I have to write the code. Um, I have to write the code for the relay, which I've done before, so I'll just copy over stuff that I've already written. And then I have to set up the timing uh, logic so that it knows to turn on every, uh, it knows to check the temperature in the lanes uh, and then it knows to uh, turn on or off based on that logic. So, oh, um, in the lanes uh, there are Arduino units on every grow bed and some of them are going to be modified to include a temperature and humidity sensor uh, so we know exactly what's going on at that location inside the lane. So the Arduinos will be uh, connected from this up here. There we go. This is a combined temperature and humidity sensor. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to wire this into one of the existing uh, control boxes that are in there. And then uh, it will record temperature and humidity and deposit it onto a server, which is right up there uh, locally, uh, not over the internet, and uh, keep all of our data secure, if you will. Uh, so uh, we can actually read it and do something with it. So what's going to happen is one Arduino unit somewhere in the system will record temperature. It's going to send that information to the server. It'll get recorded on the server and then this box that controls the heaters will read that information, see what the temperature is, uh, and then uh, the logic will kick in that actually says, okay, hey, I want you to turn on the heater uh, for 15 minutes and then turn off and then record the temperature. So all these things are going to start talking to each other essentially through the local server. Um, you can make it to where the individual Arduino boards, uh, since these are Wi-Fi, you can get them to talk to each other, and uh, that's probably going to be something I do in a future uh, sprint, but right now, um, for the sprint that we're in, sprints are just little boxes of work that we do. Um, this sprint has about another two weeks left in it, so i got to get this all put together, this sprint, and just get it operational, and since we have the heaters in now, I'm really driven to get this done today. So. I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to get to work putting this all in. And then I'll show you how it looks. When you're mounting your Arduino, things to consider. Like right now, the best spot that I can really put it 
is right there, right along the top, which seems like a pretty nice place. The problem is you got to be able to get your hands in there and actually attach the screws that are going to hold this all in place, the mounting points. So right here, this is really hard, a uh, small screwdriver even, to kind of get in there. Go get a smaller screwdriver, one of the really small ones, uh, one of the little short and stubbies. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to point out, you know, uh, there's laying it out and getting it all to fit, and then there's getting it all to fit in such a way that you can actually use it. Uh, so when you are putting together your boxes, make sure that you think about, okay, what if something goes wrong and I need to get in here and I need to connect to the programming port of the board? You know, how am I going to do that? Where am I going to do that? Um, if, you know, another spot would be really cool over here on this thing, but the problem is I got this big old header right here that would stick out. So I, I would end up having to run a wire out of the box and then right back in and you know, that'll, that'll look bad. It won't look very professional. So I'm going to get that out of there. Okay, so I just got all my holes drilled. Uh, I did placement with everything and then marked everything with a pencil. Very high tech pencil. It's my zero gravity pencil. Some of you know what that means. Um, so, anyway, the next step here is that we're actually going to take, uh, we have to mount everything to it. So, I like to use uh, the motherboard offsets uh, here. So just a nice little screw back there. And basically you just take these and you screw them through the little holes that we just had. Uh, and then you have your basic, I mean, so there's a female end on one side, and then uh, you have just your screw on the other side there. And that's how you mount everything to this box. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna mount are uh, these couplings so that the uh, wires don't bind or get hung up on uh, the box as we run the main wires in. So what I do, get your big flathead screwdriver, uh, put them in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to bag you out here, is we're going to put the offsets in. Okay, so our next step is to actually mount the uh, devices in here, the components. Okay, so now we're connecting the uh, temperature sensor, and in order to do that, we need our little helping hands. We're gonna have to do some soldering. Um, I always like to keep my wires kind of clean, so instead of using tape to help keep them protected after the solder, I like to use the heat shrink. I got this off of Amazon again. Amazon Prime is awesome. So you gotta remember to put those the uh, heat shrink on before you do your soldering. Okay, so we got everything soldered together, and I like using these little, uh, I think they're called wall nuts. Uh, great little thing. Uh, for bringing lots of wires together and then I, I like using them rather than uh, soldering at this point because if I make a mistake it's fairly forgiving I can just twist them and uh, they can come off so uh, I'm gonna kind of make sure the wires all end up in a halfway decent spot in there 
Uh, and now what I need to do is actually start bringing in uh, the bigger devices here and putting them in and bringing wires to them. So here we go. Okay, so we got our first switch in and I got it wired up uh, to the next switch. So we're gonna leave this loose right now and the reason for that is I gotta get, have access all the way back down here. Uh, way, way, way back there is the micro USB port where I'll actually send the first program to the Arduino. So I uh, kinda need to pause on the wiring and jump over to writing some code and then we'll load the first uh, software load onto that Arduino to make sure that everything is working correctly.